Hey everyone, Peter Zion here. I am coming to you from Adair Lake in South Central Yosemite. Uh, I am part of my month-long backpacking trip and today specifically is day two of my high country traverse. So no people, no trails for a few days. Uh, what we have behind me is a glacial drop. So this is... Ah, great. That's Gray Mountain behind me. And what happened is a glacier came over this ridge, hit where the lake is now, and found some softer rock. So it bypassed the graniters, float over it, and dug into where the lake is now, and then popped up the other side, hit another chunk of granite, and then went down again. So my tent is uh, about 100 feet that way, uh, and it's a, it makes for a great camping spot, dramatic backdrops. However, it also means it's very, very windy. So last night was like camping in a uh, an aircraft testing tunnel. Anyway, uh, with that backdrop, I thought it'd be great to talk about winds. Now, most agricultural zones on the planet get their moisture from one predominant wind source, such as a jet stream or a monsoon. So the Canadian Prairie Provinces, jet stream, Russian Wheat Belt, jet stream, British Isles, jet stream, Brazil, monsoon, uh, India, monsoon, Australia, jet stream. Unless you're up north and you're monsoon. Uh, but there are a handful, five, that get moisture from both. The American Midwest, Argentina, France, <clears throat> uh, New Zealand, and I'm forgetting the fifth one for a moment. One, two, three, four, it'll come to me. Anyway, the, the point of this is we are in an era where the climate is shifting in some subtle and some dramatic ways. Uh, we've got more than enough weather data going back 120 years to prove that decisively in pretty much every corner in the world. Projecting where that takes us is a little bit more tricky, but since winds are the product of the uneven heating of the Earth's surface and seas, we know that we're seeing more dramatic shifts when it comes to wind currents than we are to temperatures. And that means from my point of view, when I'm looking at geopolitics and economics on a global scale, I have to look at sectors that are more vulnerable. And if you've got one source of, source of moisture, you are more vulnerable than if you have two sources of moisture. So you change these wind currents just a little bit and you will see moderate to dramatic, based on where you are, uh, reductions or increases in precipitation and that change was what is possible with agriculture. But if you have two wind currents that are bringing you moisture, then a subtle change probably isn't going to be noticed all that much. So if you're in one of those five zones, and for the life of me I can't remember the fifth one, <laughs> uh, you, you might actually be seeing some increases in yields. That's definitely what we're seeing in the American Midwest. Uh, there's some early data out of New Zealand that suggests the same thing. The problem with New Zealand is they've changed their crop planting so dramatically in the last 30 years, it's really hard to look at historical data for that. France is doing just fine. Argentina, it's Argentina. Uh, anyway, that's it from today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to go into some more of the mechanics of things like green power and show you what works and what doesn't. So I need to go over this ridiculously steep ridge here and then down on the other side and I'll talk to you then. Take care. Bye.